Okay guys, so I'm here at Westminster. I'm currently walking to Whitehall, where there will be the Stop Ulez 3 convoy. Uh, this is going to be the third convoy they're gonna be, that they're going to be doing. There's going to be two convoys that are going to be converging on Whitehall in protest of the ULEZ uh, expansion. The first convoy is going to be the regular anti ULEZ convoy that you guys saw in my last video. The second convoy is going to be a convoy with supercars and classic cars. I also think black taxis are also going to be joining them as well in protest of the ULEZ. So yeah, hopefully that will be a good video for you guys. I'm going to be doing some interviews and recording the convoy as well. So yeah, let's get to it. Alright guys, so I'm a little bit early at the uh, convoy. There's already the first uh, few cars coming through. So I'll show you that in a second. You guys can probably hear it already. Let's go up to it. There's going to be motorcycles, uh, classic cars, supercars. And you can already hear them revving. I'm a little bit early. It was actually a Royal Navy uh, parade, so they had to delay it. But there's a few cars already here showing up. already some cars arriving we've got some classics some motorcycles quad bikes I think I even saw a tricycle as well so this is going to be pretty cool and this is just a, this, this is just a start and this is just a start so there should be more cars coming as well motorcycles modified cars there's some more cars now coming vans these are part of the uh, usual convoy but all the uh, sports cars and classic cars that you can see are the uh, petrol hedonism convoy. Yes, mate. You good? Yeah, mate, I'm good. How I'm many good. cars do you think that could turn up? Uh, no idea. About 30, 40 maybe. Nice. So, I'm not sure. Let's find out. And this is Howard Cox. Howard Cox. Hello, good man. Seems to be London there. Hello. <laughs> good. Are, we, are we live? We are live. Hi. Hello, everyone. We're here yet again. Another anti ulez protest with honest, good, decent people trying to get rid of this dishonest mayor. Well done, guys. And we've got Al yet. Alan coming hey. in as well. Just in time. Yeah, there we go. Is Alan as well? You're live? Good afternoon. afternoon the sir. next thing pays for probably. Hey. Hey. Happy days. Uh, and the instigator and the organiser of this uh, massive yeah. feat. So well done, Keith. Superb yeah. organisation yeah. skills there. Got the Jagger yeah. and stuff. Well done. Have Amazing. Yeah. Yeah. Let's wait for the supercar. Yeah, happy days. <laughs> <laughs> Difference, air quality, viewless in place. Connected. 
so we have to organise it here. I am indeed. Yeah, so how many cars are going to be coming through today? Well, we've got, I reckon we've got about 70 here. I haven't actually counted, to be honest. But um, there's about another 25 or 50 coming in the next 15 minutes, and that's the supercars. So we've got about 50 supercars, I reckon, coming in about 15 minutes' time. So stand by, watch them come through, and listen, <laughs> listen good. <laughs> okay, look. Yes, you can. Alright, so we've got Howard Cox here, the, the London, future London Mayor, hopefully. <laughs> Definitely. Yeah. Don't listen to the polls at the moment. We've got seven months to go. There's a lot happening, and what I'm standing for is hugely popular for, for the majority of people. Uh, I'm going to get rid of all you, Les, not just the extension, all the low traffic neighbourhoods, 20 mile an hour zones, all those horrible speed bumps, all those pinch points, all those floating bus stop places. But that's not all. It's not. I'm not a one trick pony, even though my background is campaigning for the motorists. I want to triple the number of bobbies on the beat and I want to tr triple the number of affordable houses. So there's a lot going on. And unfortunately, the uh, Conservative uh, who, uh, uh, candidate, Susan Hall, who I've got a lot of respect for, is going to be the same as what we've got now. There's not much of a difference between her and Sadiq Khan. It's going to be the same old policies. We need radical change. We need to get someone in, me, 
uh, to actually get London moving again, both economically and physically. What do you think about Jeremy Corbyn potentially running? <laughs> well, I'll believe it when I see it, but he's a mischief maker. He's doing it deliberately. It, it, they're not doing it from the, in terms of helping people. They're doing it for political reasons. I, I'm not a politician. I'm a public affairs campaigner, and I've stopped £200 billion worth of tax rises in the last 13 years. None of them can claim to actually have helped anyone. All they've done is help themselves. And to be honest, uh, the opposition, as I say, in terms of the Tories in, in the uh, uh, Assembly Hall, the Great at the City Hall, They've been there for seven years and they've not stopped anything that Sadiq Khan has input on, upon us. And uh, it's time actually someone got in there that could actually do that. What do you think about the Blade Runners? Well, the Blade Runners, is, I, and, and it's right that I say I can't condone criminal activity. But the frustration is incredible. You can understand it. These cameras are out there. It, they weren't voted for. They weren't in any manifesto whatsoever. And, you know, two out of three in a public consultation uh, said they didn't want the ULES expansion. And guess what? It was put in place by a very selfish liar of a mayor. And I'm saying that. The mayor is a liar. What do you think about the ULES vans that he's put into place? Well, again, they, we didn't vote for these things. Anything to do with this process is wrong. And, I, and I, I'm seeing councils like Bromley, for example, aren't allowing these vans to actually be in their, in their uh, locality. So, yeah, I'm anti, I'm anti anything to do with ULES at the moment in time. All it does is hit hardworking people in the pocket and small businesses. So watch this space. When I get elected, this is all going. What do you think about the 2030 car ban? In 2030, yet another edict inflicting on us, which we didn't vote for. And in fact, we were at 2040, but Boris Johnson brought it to 2035 and overnight he changed it to 2030. All new diesel and petrol car sales will not be allowed after 2030 or from 2030. And look, we're, we're in the end, near the end of 23. We're talking just six years away. And it's wrong. It's completely wrong. And I've, I've done an economic report again. I'm the only one that's done this. I personally financed it with the Centre of Economic and Business Research that proven that the cost of the 2030 ban will be £1,000 per household every year all the way to 2050. That's what's happened. Even if you haven't got an electric vehicle, you've got to pay £1,000 for the rich to have their playthings, EVs. It's the wrong thing to do. We should let clean fuel techno technology evolve and not being forced into these stupid plans and edicts which we didn't vote for. How do you think that ULEs and other policies will affect the car industry? Well, they are affecting the, the, the industry now. Uh, this is probably the last year that we're going to see an internal combustion engine uh, production line in most of our, what's left of our production or car production lines in this country. I was talking to a, a major production director at Ford Halewood, and he said that if we don't get this 2030 ban lifted, or certainly delayed, we won't see any diesel or petrol cars made in this country after this year. It'll all be electric vehicles. And, and, and electric vehicles aren't practical, and they're not that green. Cradle to grave, from when they we get the lithium out of the ground all the way through to disposal, unfortunately, they are not as green, believe it or not, as petrol and diesel vehicles. And it takes about 80,000 miles of driving an electric vehicle to get any return to the environment. It doesn't make any sense. We've been forced into this, and that's why so many people, including the Blade Runners, are now voting with their actions rather than actually trying to vote. I mean, we've got to get rid of politicians that aren't listening. And one, the biggest one, of course, is Sadiq Khan. What's your final message to the voters? Well, my final message is please give me a chance. Uh, Reform UK came to me. I, I voted Tory for 50 years. I'm 68 years of age. Every single election I voted Tory. Never again. We've got the highest taxation. We've got my daughter, for example, can't, she earns a decent salary uh, driving an HGV truck, uh, but she can't afford to buy a, a house in London. It's impossible. It's those sorts of things we've got to get, uh, uh, actually return to normality, as I call it. What we're seeing now, all we've got is woke, WEF sort of influence type uh, policies, it, only both Labour and Conservatives, and my message is we got a real chance if you voted me in, in London, I think the message would spread right across the country. All right, thank you.
So what do you think about Sadiq Khan's Eulers? Seriously? <laughs> Not a lot. <laughs> disgusting. Absolutely disgusting attack on the people of London. I, I, I'm absolutely appalled by I'm also appalled by the government who's allowed him to do this. Because Sunak has sat back and thought that we're all going to blame the Labour government over this. We're not. He's got the powers to do something and he's not bothered doing it. He's city, sort of thinking we're silly and we're blaming the Labour Party. But they'll suffer the next election. If they don't take notice of what we want, they will never... You know, Labour is already supposedly eschewing for the next thing. The only thing that can save this for the Tories is to actually scrap this. They scrap you, Liz, get rid of the whole thing and maybe people might start believing them again. At the moment, they don't. We despise the Tories the same as we despise the Labour Party. The only party that stands up for the people of this country at this moment are Reform UK. Nobody else does it, because they're the only people that said that they will get rid of not just the expansion, but the existing LEZ as well, which should have should never been bought in. It was all bought in on lies, the same as this had been bought in on lies about air quality. Every single figure that Khan has ever come up with can be disproved, has been disproved. All the scientific evidence that supposedly he's got is a lie and can be shown to be a lie. So I'm not impressed by this man, the fact that he's quite happy to blame us for all the air pollution that's going on. It's rubbish, it's absolutely rubbish. It's not vehicle pollution. If there is polluted air in, in London, if, if I had a, a, a meter with me now, which I normally do carry, I can prove conclusively that we don't have bad air. And you can show Khan that every day, 24 hours, seven, and he'll still say that there's bad air quality. So, you know, he's, he's telling us black's white, basically, and people are believing. The man's a liar. What do you think about the Blade Runners? Um, I have to say, look, a set piece. Uh, I don't condone, I don't condemn. I understand what they do. You know, these are desperate people. You know, people that are seeing their livelihoods being taken away. Um, you know, people with... I obviously know a lot, you know, but I don't know it, you know. So they're, they're just fighting for their freedom. They're, they're fighting to be able to carry on making a living or be able to get to the hospitals and that. And if, they, if the government doesn't listen, this is what they see. They see destroy the system and that's it, you know. No signs, no fines, no cameras. That's what they believe in. And I, and I say, I can't condone them, but Christ, I have to understand what they're doing. So, what do you think about Ulez, uh, Sadiq Khan's Ulez camera vans? Um, do you know what? I'm, I'm so ashamed that my fellow human being would actually drive one of them. You know, to use those to implement this because they can't stop the cameras being destroyed. But they're already being attacked, you know that, don't you? You know, that they've had their tyres punctured, screens broke, cameras broke. And I'm sure it's going to continue if it, it will get worse or better whatever what your perspective is on it. Do you think there should be changes to the GLA to make it more democratically accountable? Uh, the, the GLA, as you know, is proportional representation. That, that has allowed... I mean, I, I was all in favour of that, but it just seems, because of the way the voting system is that way, that if you're a minor party in there, which includes the Tories, they don't win anything. They can't, because they're outvoted all the time. I mean, I've sat in on GLA meetings when Khan's been caught lying over and over again, yet he gets away with it. So what actual power that they've got over him, I, I don't see it. You know, he, he lied. Well, the first thing he got caught, caught lying about on camera, that he said he hadn't interfered with the consultation process. And it was proved that he had. 100% proved that he'd done it. And he was supposed to be coming up in front of the monitoring officer for the GLA. And all of a sudden, that particular monitor officer would sort of move sideways. So she, it never happened. As I say, the man is sort of Teflon coated. He seems to be able to do what he wants, when he wants, and nobody is doing anything about it, you know? Nice. Yeah, good. So with the government pushing electric vehicles, what do you think the future of classic cars are? Well, I actually think, um, unfortunately, people are making such a big deal of the fact that they're exempt and obviously the government are looking at it. So I think eventually, but anyway, I mean, classic cars, when it goes to pay per mile, well, they're going to be included anyway. But you mentioned electric cars. There is no future in electric cars, none whatsoever. 
this is us, the, the public, being forced onto something that is totally impractical, that is extremely bad for the environment. Anybody that is sanctimonious who think that they buy one and they save the planet, you've got to be kidding me. They cause more damage to the planet than any other vehicle on the road in their manufacture. Plus, moment, nice. Yeah. Where do people that drive these things, that own these things, where do they think the power comes from that charges them? They're fossil fuels. They don't come out of the ether. They certainly don't come from wind generation. They certainly don't come from solar panels. If, if you are so sanctum, if you're such a, a, a yeah, sanctum, I can't think of another word. If you're the sort of person that thinks you're gonna save the planet by using that, I tell you, only take power from solar and wind and see how far you get. You won't get anywhere. What's your final message to the voters? Um, chuck these lot out. Vote, vote for reform, because unfortunately, as I say, the other parties are not listening. I mean, reform, obviously, obviously they, are, they are outsiders, but I mean, if I was a betting man, why would I bet on confirmed losers? All the other main parties have been in, lost power, and have failed what they've done. Reform, give them a chance. They're the outsiders, I put my money on them every day. Thank you very much. Okay. So who are you running for and, and what constituency are you running for? Okay, my name's Alex Wilson and I'm going to be standing in Ilford North uh, for Reform UK at the next general election. Uh, hopefully also standing in the London Assembly election next year. It's a really important opportunity for us to uh, get the message out there and stop Sadiq Khan. Do you think there should be uh, structural changes to the GLA to make it more democratically accountable? I think it's important that the Assembly should have more oversight over what the Mayor is doing uh, and prevent the Mayor from getting away with things that, uh, that otherwise are kind of, you know, going too far and taking his power to out, like obviously you Les, which is why we're all here today. Um, yeah, he's decided he thinks he can roll it out, he can do what he likes, he's effectively a, a dictator and the Assembly doesn't have that much power to kind of rein him in. So yeah, it'd be, it'd be good if, if, they, if they could. Um, but also, don't forget, Rishi Sunak could have stopped this. Uh, he had the power under the um, uh, Greater London Authority Act and he chose not to exercise it. What are your thoughts on the Blade Runners? <laughs> well, Obviously, can't condone um, criminal damage, but um, I think it's a, a symptom of what happens when, when the law is so out of touch and, and, and uh, with what ordinary people really feel. Then it's not, it's, it's totally, you know, not surprising that some people decide to take it into their own hands. But obviously, yeah, I can't condone criminal damage. What do you think about the ULES uh, camera vans? I think it's uh, it's a real shame that they're resorting to that as well. It just shows the kind of deceit and underhand uh, tactics. They they're you know, not getting their way with the fixed cameras, so they're having to send out the, the mobile vans as well. They really just need to get the message that this isn't something that London wants, it isn't something that London needs. By their own figures, it's not going to make a, a meaningful difference to air quality. So the whole rationale for doing it is completely false. It's there purely as a money-grabbing, you know, sort of tax grab for, for, for Sadiq Khan. And it's important that more and more London you know, wakes up and says, no, we don't want this. What do you think about the 2030 car ban or the internal combustion engine fa a ban? Completely against it. Uh, it, very, very simple. And Reform UK is the only mainstream party that would reverse that straight away. Um, it, you know, the in internal combustion engine is a wonderful thing. Uh, and you know, people's cars, it gives them their freedom. Uh, it gives you the you know, choice and, and options and travel and, and you know, helps work, commuting, uh, visit to hospital, everything. And to expect everybody to have to change to expensive uh, electric vehicles, which uh, you know, don't have the, the range, the capacity, um, and you know, it's, it's just not realistic. And um, I, I personally would not ban uh, the combustion engine at all, but certainly to have it 2030 is, is much too quick. We don't have the infrastructure for charging. It's, it's, a, it's a nonsense, absolute nonsense. But so Reform UK is the only mainstream party who reverse that. What do you think about Susan Hall as a mayoral candidate? Well, I think she, she has many positive qualities, but um, we are obviously uh, not in the same party. Um, I would urge people who want to scrap ULES to vote for Howard Cox, our mayoral candidate. Remember, Howard will scrap all of ULES, not just the extension. What do you think about Jeremy Corbyn potentially running? I think that's an interesting question. I personally don't think he will in the end, um, but it will add a certain you know, extra level of interest to the, to the contest and make it much more competitive. Um, and yeah, we will see, but I, 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 I don't think he will run. What's your final message to the voters? The mainstream parties have let everyone down for too long, so Conservatives, Labour, Lib Dem, they're all committed to net zero, they're all committed to the 2030 car ban, and they'll all keep, at the very least, the existing part of, of ULES. So if you want something different in the London elections next year, vote Howard Cox for Mayor, vote Reform UK for the Assembly. If you want real change, you've got to vote for it. Vote for what you believe in, not what you're scared of.
Okay, so we have a uh, air quality re uh, reader meter. So let's yeah. see what the recording is at. Yeah, we go. It's well, not modded at the moment, but it's plain, really. While the reads are higher than normal. Can you cover it in your shadow? Yeah. It's, uh, the sun is getting to it. Yeah, go on. You got it. Yep. It's so 28.5 now, you see it? Yeah, you got it. But basically what happens, the atmosphere is that pulling gets blown around from the trees. So that's generally what goes on. We've got flowers about, we've got trees about, the readings will of course be higher. It's been nice weather, so the pollen gets chucked around in the air, so therefore you get higher particulate matter reading of two and a half microns. Yeah. So that explains what's going on. So that's about so. it, that's all right. So as you guys saw there, there was the meter and we are right roadside and it was at moderate levels and this is actually a car rally with internal combustion engines everywhere and it's moderate again we're right next to a live road with a literal internal combustion engine rally oh and you can see here oh, it went up to 45 just then as the wind blew around and just dropped again to about 39 36 now so it dropped up to about 45 the maximum i got on that is what i expected is the tree pollen so that is generally what happens around in nice weather. Yeah. So it makes a complete mockery of you, Les. And it comes to particular matter. So it gives you a good idea of what goes on in the real world. Yeah, thanks, man. Appreciate it. So as you guys saw there, moderate air levels. And again, that's by a roadside with a literal internal combustion engine convoy going through supercars and old classics. So if that's what it is with classic cars, Imagine what it is on a, just a regular quiet road. So that shows you that ULES is a scam. It's not about air quality, it's about raising taxes and raising money for the bankrupt TFL. Okay, so we're at the convoy. What do you think about the convoy? So the, the convoy, uh, Keith Steers arranged the convoy today. Uh, this is the third convoy we've done. We've had lots of different vehicles. Obviously we've got my bus, we've, we've had fire engines, we've had various other vehicles. We're just trying to get people to look and take notice and we're gonna, trying to get the politicians to take notice. But it seems they're not, they're just, you know, they're just rolling over, they're thinking, oh, well, it's not their problem. They don't have to live with this. They don't have to deal with the huge expenses that normal people have to deal with. We're not far right. We're just trying to get on with our lives in the best way we can in this cost of living crisis. And we just want politicians to listen. So what do you think about the future of the classic car scene? At the moment, they're ULIG's exempt if they're more than 40 years old or they're pre-1973, I think it is. Um, we're hoping that that stays the same and we're hoping that classics will roll into the, uh, uh, it'll roll, so that it'll be a rolling uh, 40 years. Obviously, I don't know if that's the case at the moment, but there are lots of classics that don't fit into those categories. So, you know, your 1990 uh, Ford Escorts, for example, they're not classed as classics yet, but they are classic vehicles. They're our history, they're our heritage. Um, you know, the, uh, the previous models of the Ford Transit. And in, indeed, in the 1990s, Ford said, Britain was built on the Ford Transit, and it's so true. But most, well, all Mark 7 Transits are now non-compliant. I'm not getting rid of my Mark 7 Transit. I'm just, you know, uh, I'm very lucky that every time I go out, someone seems to put uh, gaffer tape on it, and it wasn't me. What do you think about the scrappage scheme? The scrappage? The scrappage scheme is uh, its just a token gesture. It's a load of rubbish. Um, my van's worth five grand. I won't get five grand for it though, because I'm not, I don't qualify for these, the red, red tape hoops that they come in. I say my van, my, my van's a minibus. So uh, because it's um, because it's something my family use, we're not entitled to scrappage on it, but the scrappage is rubbish anyway. It's not, you know, doesn't cover the value of the vehicle. And why would you want to scrap something that's in perfectly good order? So we just saw a man with a moderate air reading. He had the air uh, quality uh, meter. What do you think about the air quality in London? The air quality, certainly above ground, is quite good. Uh, obviously, underground is terrible, but Sadiq Khan doesn't acknowledge that. He says, oh, yeah, we've got teams of people cleaning up the, uh, cleaning up the tube. But the thing is, he always talks about pollution. Now, he said, oh, it's not about carbon dioxide. It's about particulates. Well, if it's about particulates, the tube's terrible. Oh, well, it's not about those kind of particulates, but it's kind of these kind of particulates. The kind of particulates that damage the environment and cause climate change. Well, alter it, which one? Which, it keeps chopping and changing depending on who's listening. It's a load of crap, and I'm sorry, um, the tube, if, if, if the air quality up here is bad, the tube is terrible, but it's not bad. The tube's not that bad, to be honest with you, it's okay, but we're making a mountain out of a molehill to make loads of money. That's what it's about, it's about money. What do you think about the ULES camera vans? 
The ULES camera vans are a poor response to the public saying they don't want the ULES and the public in their masses, and I'm telling you they're in their masses, taking down and destroying cameras. I'm not condoning it, but it's happening and it's happening because people are fed up. The mobile vans are a small response to that, but they're the wrong response to it. The correct response is to listen to the public. You've got it wrong. Get rid of, uh, get rid of uh, the ULEDs entirely. Get rid of the, certainly the expansion. And we, unfortunately, we're going to have to get rid of Sadiq Khan. So when it comes to classic vehicles, we have cars like Bentleys that go all the way back to the 1920s. Do you think that EVs of the current generation will be around in 100 years to be classics? Absolutely not. Their battery life is rubbish. Uh, they reckon they've got a 10 year, 10 year battery life and the replacement battery for a lot of these vehicles they can cost 10 to 20,000 pounds and it exceeds the value of the vehicle so it's not worth doing. Thanks, man.
Okay, so I'm with the man, the myth, the legend, <laughs> brown car guy. How you doing, buddy? So what do you think about the convoy today? I think it's fantastic. I think what's been really great for me personally to see today is the presence of so many petrol heads. It's something that I've been saying since the very beginning. It's like I wanted to see more of my community, if you like. And by my community, I mean car guys, car people, petrol heads. You know, people that are involved in the classic car clubs, the modified clubs, the supercar clubs. And Chiro uh, of Petrol Hedonism has done something really extraordinary and something really amazing today by bringing down his car and some of his amazing uh, members here today. And I think it really livened things up and made the whole thing really spectacular. And I think a lot of people that were just passing by were stopping to take pictures with these incredible cars, right? So it certainly adds an extra level to it. But also, I think that it's helping to create awareness in the automotive community as well. What do you think about the future of the classic car scene with all these ULEs and anti-ice car uh, regulations? I think it's an uh, endangered species, <laughs> particularly in the London area. An event I covered recently um, by the West London Classic guys, an amazing uh, group, go check them out on Facebook. And a lot of the guys that attended that event had 80s and 90s classics, modern classics like mine. And a lot of them were really kind of quite distraught, I would say, at what's hit them, you know. And I think that, you know, but I, on the other hand, what I think is optimistic and positive is I don't think the car culture will ever die. Yeah. You know, I think it will always live on. I think that people are always will strive to make it happen and make things happen. You know, even if you have to pay £12.50 to come out to a car event once in a while, I think people will do that. But also, I think we might see a migration to older cars. So as we've seen today, some of the older classic cars, like the guy with the beautiful uh, Chevy Impala, you can bring these cars out, you know, and still drive them around. So there's still an opportunity to enjoy our cars. However, we've got to keep in mind what might be coming on the back of things like Ulysses. So we see classics like even the oldest classics like uh, the Bentleys from the 1920s. Do you think in 100 years from now, there will be classic EVs? Oh, it's a very interesting question. It's a question a lot of people have asked. I think that personally, I think there probably will be. Because I think that there will be iconic cars such as, say, for example, the original Tesla Roadster, such as, such as for example, the Nissan Leaf. You know, you may not love the Nissan Leaf, but the Nissan Leaf has carved its place in history, right? So I think on the basis of that, I think there will always be collectors and people that will keep hold of these cars and look after them and keep them going somehow. I think electric cars will actually prove to be harder to maintain in the future, unless there's, an, there's a chance to retrograde them or retrofit them with something more modern. So I think it's always possible that they'll continue to go. Um, the only issue that we have with modern cars is the electronics. So for example, you may be familiar with the McLaren F1, the original supercar. Yeah. And the fact, seater. No, the three-seater. Oh, yeah, yeah. The three-seater. The yeah, the, the seat Gordon Murray's car, right? And the thing is, there's only one laptop computer that actually talks to that car. <laughs> So you have problems like that that come into existence, right? That you have an issue where, okay, how do we run it? How do we maintain it? How do we look after it? Especially when you've only got one computer that can actually talk to the car. So there's always cases like that. So I think that there's, it's going to be difficult, but I think there's a lot of people there that are so enthusiastic and so passionate. And I think there will always be people that will keep this going. So no, I don't think it's the end of car culture. I think car culture will continue regardless. Do you think all these uh, anti-ice car regulations are going to affect future technologies like uh, synthetic fuels and biofuels? Fuels? Well, I think that there's a, a concerted effort on the part of certain sectors in the industry to prove that these technologies are viable. And I think that that's a very important move. And I think there's, there are companies like Corrigan, for example, that are doing a lot of work in the area. Companies like Porsche that are doing a lot of work in the area. And these are companies, particularly in the case of Porsche, with some serious clout. Porsche belongs to the Volkswagen group, of course. Volkswagen itself is going entirely electric, but you know, there are companies like Porsche that are not. Germany and Italy have already put a spanner in the works when it comes to um, the 2035 cutoff point in Europe, as opposed to our 2030 point. Do you think they're uh, going to drop the 2030 ban and delay it or drop it completely when the time me, comes? Me personally, I think yes. I mean, the government's adamant that they're going to stick to it, but I, I don't think it's going to be workable. You know, I, I think that people will still need uh, internal combustion engine cars uh, by 2030 and beyond. Because so even, even in uh, Italy and uh, uh, Germany, which obviously has a huge uh, ice manufacturing lines, they don't want to get rid of that industry. Yeah, exactly. So that's what's happened there, is that they've got a stay of uh, execution, if you like, with 2035. Um, but what the, what the legislators have said is like cars beyond 2035, if they're, going, if they're not going to be EV, then they must be able to use the synthetic fuels. So I think that that's a very important move and actually it's a very beneficial move because what's going to happen is that the economies of scale, synthetic fuel is very expensive to produce and distribute right now, prohibitively so. But with the fact that there's so many people going to need them, if Germany has to do that, then I think the economies of scale will make that more viable. 
So suddenly that will become more accessible, more people will be able to get it, and the, co the cost of producing it will come down. And I think that's very important, and that's important for the future of classic cars as well. Do you think the car industry is struggling to transition to manufacturing EVs? Yeah, definitely. I think the car industry will be decimated by this transition, to be honest with you. I was speaking to somebody the other day and I said, I think we are a lot of uh, favorite uh, brand names and uh, brand plates are going to disappear uh, because of what's happening. Because the transition is much more fundamental than people realize. The two technologies are actually quite fundamentally different. So when, what a lot of people don't realize about the car industry is the car industry has uh, massive departments and massive investment in researching and developing traditional internal combustion engine technology for the future those departments will all disappear. Ford, for example, have already said that 40% of its workforce will have to disappear um, as it transitions to electric only. So that's quite major. If you think of Ford as one of the biggest car manufacturers in the world, to lose 40% of its staff, that's a major transition. And why is it doing that? It's because it won't need all those aspects of producing a traditional internal combustion engine car. And also the fact that when you think about the, a lot of people are producing this, what they call a skateboard technology, which is a platform for electric cars, which is basically just a platform with batteries in it, with a motor at each end, and it can be you know, basically programmed however you want it. So what happen, what's happening now is that a lot of companies are just selling this equipment to other people, right? So you take Ford. Ford's first electric car was a Ford Mustang Mach-E, which they developed in-house. Ford's second electric car is the Ford Explorer, for which they just bought the platform for Volkswagen, because economically it was more feasible. So, you, so you're going to see a lot of consolidation like that, and unfortunately, I think it's going to be a very tough time for the car industry. So you think there's going to be less unique cars in the future? They're going to be all just clones of, of the skateboard cars, basically? Yeah, I, th I think you're right. I think underneath, there's going to be a lot of similarities because it's fundamentally, we're going to end up with a handful of platforms that will underpin all the cars. However, I think there will also be an opportunity for people to create quite unique stuff because the platforms will exist, but the platforms can be configured because they can be altered in terms of their tracking and their length any way you like. But also the setup can be configured, so you can make it an SUV or you can make it a sports or a car or a supercar or whatever. And then what remains is the body that you put on top. So essentially what we're talking about, hopefully, possibly, fingers crossed, is a situation where we're coach building will return to the car industry. So you'll be able to, people will be able to go, right, well, we can take any platform, but we can build any body on top of it. So anybody that, anything that customer specifies, we can create that, put it on top, and the car is a good one. So it's, you know, that's how it's going to be. So I think that's partly one positive aspect of it. So with the current price of used and new cars, what do you think it's like for young people to get into the motoring scene? Yeah, it's really hard and, and it's even before the current prices. I mean, the price of a, a driving lesson is what, 40 pounds an hour or something ridiculous like that? I remember it was like eight, nine pounds when I did it. You know, it's a whole different thing. For my generation, getting a car was like a rite of passage. We had to do it. It was the first thing we had to do. But now when you think about the cost of just getting your license, passing the test, getting a car, insuring a car, running a car, it's prohibitively expensive for a lot of people. So I do feel for people, I definitely do. However, I do feel that there's a lot of young people I've met who are into cars and regardless of how much it's going to cost them they're still going to do it so i'm still optimistic about the future it is much harder for people to do it now but i think there'll always be people that are passionate enough to do it and what do you think about the blade runners <laughs> the blade runners are doing a very interesting job it's pretty much all i can say and uh yeah let's see how they get on <laughs> what's your final message to the voters I think we have to be very careful about not just ULEs, but what's coming on the back of ULEs. It's not just a London thing, it's a nationwide thing, and people have to think about that very carefully, and including how they're going to vote, not only for the mayoral election, but in the general elections. Okay, so there you guys have it. That was the ULEs protest. We've got a lot of interesting interviews there. We've got Howard Cox, a lot of, a lot of the reform member parties. Hey. A lot of the reform member parties. Um, we've got the brown car guy as well. Um, who else did we get? Um, a few of the organizers as well. Um, who we didn't get was Sadiq Khan. 
I, said, I was expecting him to be out here, but that tells you everything. But also, Susan Hall was out here either. So, I would have expected her to be here campaigning for her mayoral election, but she wasn't here. But anyway, guys, uh, if you guys enjoyed the video, give it a like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.